So when you're copy cataloging, once you've decided that which record matches the item that you have in hand, you'll need to make decisions about what, if anything, in this record you need to edit in order to correctly reflect the item that you're cataloging. Um, generally, it's a local decision as to what you should edit. Um, you'll need to develop policies that all your local catalogers will use consistently. Um, if it is a change or an edit that you think will benefit other users of this record, you may want to report the change to your utility, such as OCLC. But editing does have added value for end users and processing staff, both in your local library and possibly in other libraries. Um, other fields that are useful just to your local library may need editing if you add you know, extra fields to reflect the location or things that you need in order to be able to generate reports from your system, things like that. Keep in mind that generally you should not delete data unless it's incorrect. Um, make sure to maintain changes that affect access to the record, such as if the issuing body changes, things like that. Um, records may contain a mix of old and new practices. You know, serial records, they're constantly changing, and so they may have been created under one set of rules and then edited under another one, so they may be kind of hybrid records. Here are the categories of maintenance that we are going to look at, things that you might need to edit if you're copy cataloging. These include the ISSN, um, cessations, meaning if a, an item ceased being published, access points, and we're going to talk about variant titles and issuing bodies when it comes to access points, the place of publication or the publisher's name, changes in numbering, changes in frequency, and whether or not there is another version available, meaning another physical format. First, we'll talk about changes to the ISSN, the 022 field in the MARC record. If you're cataloging something, you may notice that the ISSN in the, the record you're using is incorrect. Um, perhaps it appears differently on your item, and you verify that the one on your item is actually the correct number to use. In that case, I would go ahead and move the incorrect ISSN to a subfield Y and put the correct one in subfield A. If you have in your hand what you know to be the last issue of a serial and no one has updated the record yet to reflect that, then you would want to go ahead and make a few edits to reflect that the publication has ended. So let's say you have found this record for the item that you are cataloging. You have in your hand the final issue, which is volume 3, number 2, in 1990. And so this is the original record. Notice that in the dates elements in the fixed field. It has a start date of 1988 and then it says 9999 to indicate that it's currently being published. Um, also the date status element is C to mean that it's currently being published. Um, you'll notice in the 300 field it just says volumes rather than giving a, a number of volumes because that reflects the publication that is still going. So these are the changes that you would want to make to the record. Um, first up in the fixed field you would change the date status code to D meaning that it's no longer published. An easy way to remember this is that D stands for dead. Um, then you would add the 1990 as a second date in the dates elements, get rid of 9999 and put in 1990. You would also need to close the date range in the 264 field for the date of publication. Go ahead and put 1990 after the hyphen. Since this one is done, we know how many volumes there were. In this case, there were only three, so you can add that in the 300 field. And you can also close the date range of the numbering in the 362 field. Another situation in which you might need to edit a record would be if there are changes in um, title, in variant titles. Um, the first example is an example of a situation where the title from the, pro the preferred source, you know, the, perhaps the title page, stays the same, but the title from a different source, perhaps the cover, changes. And you can go ahead and put this in a, 260, a 246 field, excuse me. Um, uh, subfield A is where the title goes, and subfield F is for the years that this title appeared on the item. In this case, it started in 1990, and as far as we know, it's still going that way. The second example of a variant title is one where, for something minor, that doesn't really affect the um, access to this, or the way the title is thought of, um, so it doesn't require a whole new record, but it's something little like in this case, Open House was published as one word, and then from 2006 on, the title appears as two words, and so this is also something that you could put in a 246 field. 
you would also maybe see fluctuating titles. These are titles where it's not a permanent title change. It doesn't totally switch to this title, but it fluctuates back and forth. For example, um, a newspaper where the title is normally the Daily Journal, but on Sunday it appears as the Sunday Journal, something like that. That would be an example of a fluctuating title. Um, and so you can put a fluctuating title in a 246 field. Um, in the first example, the publication is usually known as Knitting Times, but some volume from 1980 on had the title Knitting Times News Weekly, but it's not, it goes kind of back and forth. It didn't make a permanent change to that title. Um, and then one issue each month has a title Apparel World. So again, it fluctuates. It doesn't always stay changed to the new title. The second example shows a publication which it looks like it's put out jointly by two organizations and they alternate back and forth which one's acronym comes first in the title. Issuing bodies of, an of a publication can also change. Um, they could be start to be issued completely by another organization or the name of the organization could change. In this case, when the publication started, it was issued by a body known as the International Committee for Sociology of Sport. And then from 1996 on, the issuing body appears as the International Sociology of Sport Association. And so in this case, you would add a note in the 550 field giving the name of the new organization and the years when it was issued. And then I would add another 710 field for an access point for the new organization name. The publisher and the place of publication could also change. In this case, the last issue published in Maryland was September 1991 and beginning in 1992 was published in Bloomington, Indiana by Indiana University Press. So here's the change you would need to make to this record. You can add a second 264 field for the publisher's name, the new publisher's name and place of publication. Um, notice that both the 264 fields now have subfield 3 at the beginning, which give the years that the publisher was responsible for this particular publication. Notice that the second 264 field has a first indicator of 3, meaning that this is the most recent publication information. You could also have changes in numbering. And this would be reflected in the 362 field. In these three examples, the stuff in kind of pink is the new information added to reflect a change. And you can see that in the first example, it used to be issued just with volume numbers from volume 1 to volume 110, but starting in 1997, it was issued with years instead. The second example is one where it started with volume 1 and went to volume 25 and then started over with volume 1 again in 1946. And the third example shows that they simply had the year given from 1985 to 1995 and then in 1996 started with volume 1 in addition to the date. And to further complicate things, you can also talk about numbering discrepancies that don't fit neatly into the 362 field. You can put them in a 515 note. So this says that issues from May 1998 on were called number 3 rather than volume. You also could have changes to frequency. And what you should do in this case is retag the existing frequency note, change it from a 310 to a 321 field, and then put the current frequency in a 310 field. And in both of these cases, add subfield B to show the dates where the frequency was applicable. You will also need to change the fixed field. Now in this case, this used to be a bi-weekly publication and now it's a weekly publication. So the fixed field element for frequency is changed to W. And the last edit we're going to talk about would be if you find out that there is another version available, meaning another physical format. So it's issued if you have the print item, you also find out that it's issued in CD-ROM or microfilm or probably most commonly these days online. Um, if you have the title and perhaps the Library of Congress control number and the OCLC number, you can use a more formal note or a, a linking field, the 776, but you can also simply use a note in a 530 field and say issued also on CD-ROM or issued also online or describe whatever the 
other physical format is. So those are a few edits that you might need to make to a record when you're copy cataloging a serial. 